and I'll bring our final reading this morning, uh, which is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, uh, verses 36 to 44. Hear the word of the Lord. Jesus said, But about that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away, so too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then there will be two in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken and one will be left. So keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would, would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our Lord endures forever. Amen. For the past uh, several years now, we've had this annual covenant renewal service on the first Sunday of the year because that Sunday has fallen on January 1st, 2nd, or 3rd. It is a beautifully appropriate time for a covenant renewal service because we began those years then by reminding ourselves of God's promises to us and then by recommitting ourselves uh, to the promises that we have made to God. We did it just at the beginning of this year. January 1st, 2023 was a Sunday. So this is the rare year where we get to squeeze in two covenant renewal services on the same calendar. It's like a New Year's resolution then, but a holy one, like Doug has talked about it. Not just a resolution, not just a promise, but a covenant, which is a promise then to God in the presence of God and God's people. This year, though, is different. Uh, to wait until the first uh, Sunday of 2024 would be to wait until January 7th, which, as we talked about, is after the Feast of Epiphany, and at which point, let's be honest, most of us have already abandoned our New Year's resolutions. But this day, the final day of 2023, is a Sunday, and it offers us a different perspective on what will follow in our covenant renewal service. Because before John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, called it his covenant renewal service, it was called a watch night service. And it was held every year on New Year's Eve. Think of it like waiting for the ball to drop in New York City, but a lot less shiny and exciting. That as we'll see both in our scriptures and in our world, the concept of a watch night has great potential to reframe how we see God and our promises to one another. Simply put, because you are here today, what you will experience will make this the most transformational New Year's Eve in memory. So when it comes to a watch night service, or for us a watch day service, having this in mid-morning, we rely on our scriptures that all spoke of watching and waiting. In Isaiah 21, the prophet is given a promise and a command from God, go post a lookout. He begins, or as the verse may be more commonly known in the good old King James Version, go set a watchman. This watchman watches and waits until he sees riders approaching with news that the evil empire of Babylon has fallen. So to a people long harassed and tormented, this watchman's work is holy. That any second he wastes in watching is a second that this announcement is delayed. The people of God are waiting with bated breath for the announcement that fallen, fallen is Babylon. So they need to hear it as soon as the watchman sees the Apostle Paul gives uh, similar advice to the Romans. He is calling them toward the end of his letter to watch and to wait for the coming of the Lord and then to be found faithful when he arrives. So he writes, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. And finally, Jesus says something very similar in our gospel reading. In Matthew 24, in a chapter consumed by discussions about and all about the end of the world, how will it happen, when will it happen, what will it be like, they're all wanting to know. Jesus reminds us that it isn't our job to know when. 
Not even the Son, he says, knows the day and the hour. Therefore, you must be ready, Jesus says, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. That's why Isaiah sets a watchman. If they knew what time to expect the announcement of Babylon's fall, they wouldn't have needed a watchman at all. But they didn't know, so they needed a watchman to go and to keep lookout. See, this was a theme that we explored a few weeks ago in Advent, if you remember, if you were here. We know that God has made certain promises to us, but they might not all be fulfilled yet. We've heard them. We've read them in Scripture. We've heard them in service. We might have have experienced them in our own prayer life, but we haven't seen them fulfilled yet. So we've received some of these promises, some of these blessings, but not all. So how do we wait for the arrival of these, of these promises? Like an illustration uh, here from history might be helpful. On September 22nd, 1862, uh, President Abraham Lincoln issued the famous Emancipation Proclamation which freed all of the slaves in the Confederate states currently at war with the Union. And the executive order was then to go into effect on January 1st of the following year, 1863. So then, 161 years ago today, on New Year's Eve, 1862, slaves across the Confederate states gathered for what they called their watch night. The proclamation had been issued in September, but it wouldn't go into effect for three and a half more months. Word of the proclamation had reached them despite the best efforts of the slave owners. They knew, as Paul wrote in Romans 13, the night is far gone, the day is near, just a few more hours and they would be free. But of course, then, January 1st, 1863 came and went. If you know your U.S. history, you know that's not when the Civil War ended. The Confederate states were still fighting and no slave owner was keen uh, to emancipate his slaves. So wait, those enslaved men and women continued to do. And wait, they did for two more years until April 1865 when General Lee surrendered uh, to General Grant at Appomattox. And the Civil War was officially over then. But still, slave owners were still not keen to accept this new reality. It wasn't until two months later then when another Union general enforced emancipation in the final state that they made it to Texas on June 19th of 1865. This is the origin of the newly emergent holiday of Juneteenth, which celebrates that day finally after two and a half years of waiting when freedom came finally to all Americans. The waiting And watching in the Christian life is a little like this. What we may expect now does not arrive now. What we have waited for for years, sometimes we must wait some time longer. But we must not confuse God's not yet with no. Just because God's timing is not our own timing serves only to remind us that we are not God. In the meantime, then is where we live as Christians in the meantime. And how we live in this time of waiting and watching is where the fruit of our faith is born. Because watch and wait are words of action. And that's our bottom line here for this watch night service today, for this covenant renewal service, that watch and wait are words of action. This is what Jesus said when he said to be ready. This is what Paul said when he called us to throw off the works of darkness and to put on the armor of light. We do this by watching and waiting, which are two of the most active words in our English language. We watch and wait in a significant way by the covenant we will renew in a moment with the liturgy that we will share in the service. The words of our liturgy draw us into those promises of God which we are watching and waiting for, which we know will be fulfilled and that we're tasting a glimpse of today. So our prayers and our promises call us then to active watching and waiting. Not because we are unsure of God's promises, unsure if they will ever materialize, but because we are fully, fully confident in them. We set a watchman with this service so that as soon 
as the arrival of God's promises are on the horizon, we will be faithful to see them. We watch and we wait by throwing ourselves into the work of God's kingdom, by serving where we are called and going where we are sent. These watch and wait are words of action. Something I believe will strike you in our liturgy here in a moment. There will be a word or a line that will stick in your brain and, will not, and you will not be able to shake it. And that will be a gift from God. It will be the path forward for your watching and waiting. Perhaps God will call you to recommit to a former practice or discipline. Perhaps a new ministry will be where God sends you. Or perhaps God is preparing a reprioritizing of your world so that you are better suited for these promises to arrive. Whatever it is, it will be a call to action. Because watch and wait are words of action. So set a watchman with us this morning. Watch and wait with us as we renew our covenant. For salvation, as Paul said, is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. So come, Lord Jesus. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you. We thank you for the ability to set a watchman, to be on the lookout for the promises that you have spoken over us. We are so grateful for these promises. So we pray that your Holy Spirit now would give us eyes to see, to look out on the horizon, to see the first sliver of those promises being fulfilled. So that while we watch and we wait, that you would strengthen us to be faithful. That you would cause us to do those things so that when you arrive in our midst, you would say, well done, good and faithful servants. Lord, we cannot do this without the gift of your Holy Spirit, and so we pray that that, that, that gift would be sent into our hearts now. So, Lord, we pray. We pray all this in the name of your Son, our Savior, uh, who taught his disciples to pray in this way, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.